Alrighty guys, welcome back to another one. We're going to be loading a 10 gauge 1 and 5 8 ounce bismuth load today and the goal here is to create a load that patterns dense enough to get the job done on turkeys but also wide enough to get the job done on goose and ducks. So it'll be a universal load for turkeys, ducks, and goose. That is the goal. Fingers crossed we can get it done. I am using published load data here. The only thing I'm doing different is incorporating a mile I wrap to it. That's it. That's all I'm doing different. So, should be a nice solid load. Let me get you guys over here and show you exactly what we're working with today. Now, I am using a Shadot hole this time, and you guys know I'm not a huge fan of these. However, it is a good hole for a few loadings. I will be crimping this in a little bit of an unusual manner today. These do not crimp well on my Lee load all. They're just a little bit too thin to withstand the uh, pressure of it. They do fine on a mech, and I know just get a mech press, but guys, I prefer the Lee load all. I like mechs. I have nothing against them, but to do what I do with eight different gauges and multiple different shell lengths, I would need, I think it's 13 different mech presses to get the job done that I can do with two Lee load alls. And for the 24 and 32 gauges, well, I would have to have them converted and really messed with to be able to load those gauges. Ponsness Warren will actually build 24 and 32 gauge presses, though. But we'll get to that unusual crimping method in just a moment. But yeah, let's get over here and check this out. All right, guys, so the components I'm using in order is a Shadot hull, 10 gauge, of course. They come with the CX2000 standard primer. Now we're using a uh, Hodgdon HS6, an X10X gas seal, the Ballistic Products BP1044 wad. We're using a Ballistic Products My Thin Mylar, and I have trimmed one quarter inch off of it, and one and five eighth ounces of Roto Metals Number Four Bismuth, which is alloyed with six percent tin. One and five eighth ounces is one point six two ounces on the scale, and lastly, Ballistic Products ITX Buffer which is meant for non-toxic shot. And that is my favorite buffer of all time. All right, so let's jump right into it. The powder is again Hodgdon HS6. Guys, this is one of the consistently best performing powders we have ever tested. We hardly ever have a bad pattern with HS6. The problem with it is, around here anyway, it's uh, two to three dollars more expensive than long shot, which is not a huge deal. But this stuff is not as versatile as long shot is. You can't load quite as heavy, but the lighter payloads, it's low pressure, well, lowish pressure, and you get some good speeds out of it. It's a good magnum powder, just not super magnum. I'm talking like over ounce and five eighth in 12 and 10 gauge. I'm sure in 10 gauge you can load up to at least ounce and seven eighth, but that's a topic for a different day. Anyway, 41 and a half grains. This is going to get you 1300 FPS with a 1 and 5 8 ounce load with buffer. The Lee 2.2 CC dipper looks like it drops, let's see, roughly 32 grains of HS6. We need 41 and a half though. All right, there's our 41 and a half grains. It's actually closer to 42, but we'll live with that. Now, next is the X10X gas seal. Drop it right in there. Guys, those gas seals fit a little bit loose in these shot holes. They have a lot of capacity, but they are shorter than a Federal or a Remington. They're a lot shorter than a Remington. In fact, I have a Remington right here. Let's see how long it is in inches. It is 3.54, so it's quite a bit longer than a full three and a half inch shell. And this one measures I dropped it, but it's 3.38 inches, which is three and uh, three eighth inches. So not really close to a three and a half inch shell. I just threw that in the floor. Well, I've got this set of calipers out here. A Winchester measures 3.29, so it's even shorter than Shadot's are. And the Federals measure, this one anyway, is measuring exactly 3.5. So looks like the Winchester may be the shortest of all. Let's get another one and measure it real quick. Alrighty, here's a different one. It looks like it's about the same. Oop, missed it. 3.2, or sorry, 3.3, .3, so. They're actually shorter than the Shadots are. Yeah. That's funny. That's slightly over three and a quarter inches right there. <laughs> Didn't expect that. Anyway, moving on. 
the Ballistic Products BP 1044 wad, which is a re-release of the PT 1044 wad, and they are now made with the TPS wad resin. Set that right there. The Ballistic Products, my thin mylar, and I have trimmed one quarter inch off the, uh, off the sheet of mylar to make it fit this load. Wrap it up, set it right down in your shot cup, and we are now ready for some shot. This is exactly one and five eighth ounces of number four bismuth, again from Roto Metals, and it is alloyed with 6% tin. Sorry, I meant to uh, tell you how much that is in grains. Get the hull zeroed out. And that is 707 grains on my scale. The recipe calls for 20 grains of Ballistic Products Buffer, so that's what I'm using. A little bit more. Guys, that was a lot more buffer than I expected it to be. The total payload now is 1.66 ounces, which is very close to uh, 1 and 11 16th. Get that tamp down. So we have our buffer in place and it looks like it's sitting just below the top row of pellets and this load does call for an overshot card, but it doesn't really look like it needs it. Probably that mylar wrap built up stack height a little bit, but I'm using a very thin piece of a 10 gauge nitro card. And that's mostly just there in this case to uh, help keep the buffer in. But we are ready to crimp this and that you can see the uh, stack height, it's about right. So the unusual crimping method I was referring to, I'm using a mech crimp starter. Uh, the pre-crimp in this is still 12 gauge and sometimes it will crush these thin Shaddai hulls. Not really an issue with once fired, but with brand new hulls it is. So all I'm doing here is setting that over the hull and I guess I have to do this off camera, but just push down a little bit, add some pressure and get the crimp started and set it right back on there and what I do is I grab the uh, primer door off my other press over here, set it right here. Primer door goes like that. And then just finish crimping it or pre crimping it. Good to go. Now we get the crimp mostly closed with the press. And then I'll have to move over to the GOP to finish it. And right here is about as far as I take it with the uh, with the Lee, because again, it will crush the hulls if I try to close this with that press. Shadots are good hulls, but these are just too thin. I don't really have a way to show me finishing this with a gop. I broke the tripod I normally rest my camera on, so now I've got it like on a stack of empty buffer cans. I'll show you that here in a second, but I will mark this hole with a random pattern just to show you it is the same hole. This is what it looks like. Hope you guys can see that, but it is, it's going to be the same hole. I'll do something with the bottom of it. Maybe you can see that better. Yeah, well, the lighting sucks, but it's the same hole. Trust me, guys. And here it is. You can see the attempted markings on it, but we have a decent crimp on it. Not the best in the world, but it'll certainly hold. Not bad at all. Here's the stack of buffer cans I was referring to. Yep. So these Shaddai 10 gauge hulls, I only have to load them like that the first time. When they're a once fired hull, I can just straight up load them on the press like normal. I have like 200 of these and I don't load them all that often to be honest. I mainly just use them for slugs or other roll crimp shells, but sometimes I will fold them, but not too often. Side note here, you guys ever heard of HS7? This is it right here. It actually has about the same burn speed as long shot. I think it's actually a touch slower, but this bottle right here is dang near full of the top. Hope you can see it here without me spilling it. But yeah, it weighs 28, almost 29 ounces in here. And this jug right here of Winchester 571, it's the same powder as HS6. It's about three quarters of the way full. So I have quite a bit of HS7. Problem with that is, there's not a whole lot of um, easily accessible data out there. There isn't loading manuals, but I only have one of those. Josh does have an app on his phone. Um, it was only four bucks, and it has like tens of thousands of loads in it, all published loads, and there is a ton of HS7 data in it. The problem, another problem with this stuff right here is it being discontinued, both the 571 and the HS7. 
<laughs> I don't really use it that much for, you know, demoing purposes because I know a lot of people these days probably don't have access to that powder. Um, I got lucky and I paid, let's see, it was $15 for these two together, a half a pound of long shot, some uh, reloader number seven, a uh, little bit of little gun, and a few other powders, but yeah, $15 for like six or seven full, half full or almost empty cans of powder, $15 for all that, you can't beat it. I have over three pounds of HS7 here, $15 would have uh, been well worth it for just this alone. Oh, one other powder that I got in that $15 deal was a full can of uh, 800X. This powder is similar to Blue Dot or Long Shot. It's another slow-burning Magnum powder. Again, discontinued, though. I did also get some uh, Hodgdon International Clays in that deal. This stuff is about like a Green Dot or Winchester AA Super Handicap. It's a fast to uh, medium speed burn powder, but it's good for clays. It smells great, too. Uh... It's actually one of the best smelling powders out there. Why not just show you everything I got? Uh, this came from Steve's Guns in Ashland, Kentucky. Again, it was all $15 for what I'm about to show you. I did remember wrong. It was not Long Shot Little Gun. It was a very full can of HS7. About three quarter of the way full of Winchester 571. And these two are the same powder. Uh half full can of Hodgdon International Clays, a full can of IMR 800X. There's about this much in here of reloader number seven. I don't have a use for that. About, I don't know, third full of IMR 4227. I have a nearly full pound of that in a modern plastic bottle down here, but I use it in 410 and 16 gauge. And IMR 4350, not 4831, but another rifle powder. I don't really have a use for this right now. I do have a rifle and pistol press. It's a Lee turret press, but it is not set up right now. But that's for future us to uh, mess with. This bottle right here has a price tag of $15.95. As Wade Rush put it, that was probably also the year it was made going off that price. $15.95. This bottle of HS7 here, this really surprises me. You guys want to know how much this cost originally? $10.49 for a good Magnum powder. Man, I wish I wish I was reloading back then. Of course, it was probably 20 years ago. I would have been 8 years old. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me. I just wanted to show you a hopefully universal uh, load right here for bismuth, turkey, goose, duck, you name it, but yeah, hopefully it, you know, pattern's great. Anyway, please like and subscribe. We always appreciate that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and we'll get back to you. And if you want to, go check out our Patreon. It's as low as a dollar a month, and you guys get early access to content. A link to that, as well as a link to our Instagram and Rumble accounts, will be in the description below. But other than that, you guys take it easy, and we'll see you in the next one.